Learning in a small group is a natural environment of learning for the adult learner. Teaching and learning in a group setting is a commonplace also within the university context. However, the conscious implementation of the small group pedagogy could enhance the quality of learning in a substantial degree. By understanding the basics of group phenomena, the teacher is able to observe, interpret and relate to the group phenomena and adjust her his actions to enhance the group processes, thus enhance the learning. As no group is identical to another, also the group processes vary in their nature and timing. So this is a group uh, for university pedagogical studies. We are uh, teachers at the university uh, who are studying, well, basically teaching skills and pedagogical skills. This is uh, the second phase of university pedagogical studies. All of us, we have done the first phase. And now then uh, we are a group, group of teachers who want to develop more skills when it comes to teaching. And uh, we volunteer to take the second phase of pedagogical studies. The essence of small group pedagogy is challenging to illustrate or to verbalize. One has to experience it first-hand in able to get a grasp of its holistic nature. Teaching and learning in small groups can be experienced by the group members as challenging. The aspired open mental space that is essential in the pedagogical small group requires openness in the group's communication. Learning in a group is very different uh, because uh, you have to take into account uh, the, the reactions of the group. Humans instantly and automatically react to what's happening in, the, in their social environment. But it's a very strong experience, on the other hand, sometimes things that you learn in a group because there, there's a very deep feeling, very deep uh, feeling associated with the, with the situation that this gets ingrained very deeply compared to something that you learn, uh, let's say, by reading. Learning in a small group resembles the way a research team is tackling about a research task at hand. It is a collaborative effort. Learning takes place mainly by discussion and functional tools. The house of mirrors coming to a live metaphor describes this collaborative event at its best. My own ideas and thoughts are reflected back at me in a new and enriched way. To learn by discussion, it means to me that it gives you also a personal meaning when it comes to learning, when you learn in a group, in interaction, by discussing. I work in a research group doing, doing chemistry, and, and in this environment we, we discover new things day in, day out, and for students they should be getting the same experience, and through this kind of dialogue and, and uh, openness I, I think this is the only way to true great learning. In order to create an atmosphere where this is possible, participants must experience a safe environment. Only then they are willing to participate to the group work as themselves. The element of safety makes it possible that the student dares to get involved to the collective knowledge building process by stepping out of the personal comfort zone. Safety is very important and uh it's uh, difficult to explain where it comes from because uh, it's uh, part of the safety is uh, that you feel that you are being uh, accepted. Experienced safety enables a student to dare to participate to the process in an open manner as one is, without a disguise. To verbalize personal emotions and express thoughts however incomplete they might be. This way others are invited and accepted too to join in. Incomplete. From the viewpoint of building up a safe group environment, the beginning phase of starting a group process is important. As a teacher and facilitator, 
one is allowed and it is highly recommended to use enough time at the beginning. Thus, warming up is not only an acceptable but necessary phase in initiating a group's session. The teacher and facilitator cannot rush directly to the academic topic at hand. Also, a set of common rules and principles are often helpful in creating a dialogic and positive culture in a group, especially if the process continues for a longer period of time. The facilitator of the process should be coherent and dialogical in the unconventional role of hers, his, as the teacher and facilitator. The leader of the session obviously has a big role in, in showing the example of, of what is allowed and what is not allowed. The teacher should demonstrate a dialogical communication culture, but the teacher does not have the last word and the right answers. While doing so, she, he dismisses her, his status, enabling the group to become emancipated and rising its agency. In this way, the interaction and dialogue is interfered by the teacher's status as less as possible. By action and dialogue, the authority is kind of handed to the group and the teacher operates from the background. In a way, the aim is an illusion of total equality between the learners and the teacher. In this context, being dialogical means the attitude towards others. Ideally, the learner is appreciative and positive towards other participants. This is demonstrated in verbal and nonverbal manner in a way that the other members of the group can experience and appreciate. Well, one of the big things that we have discussed here is that we actually don't know what the dialogue is. We, we tend to think that it's something, it's a discussion between two people, but it's, it's something more. Actually, I've forgotten the formal definition of it already, but it's, you kind of just feel it somehow. It's, it's something more. It, it's very difficult to actually pinpoint what actually causes it or, or where it stems from. But I, I think it, it, everything starts from, from the very beginning. So unless you start off the right foot, as you could say, unless you do this, then it's, it's just not going to work out in the end. So the beginning and, and the formation of the group, this really plays a huge role. So everyone kind of realizes and, and gets a feel for what's their role in the group and, and so on. I, personally, I've felt that this has a huge impact, or at least has had on us. Learning in a small group is a holistic phenomenon. Besides reaching the learning goals in a formative manner, the participants also experience, in most cases, feelings of personal nature that enhance the learning. Learning in a small group is not merely a cognitive experience, but it also touches other areas of our being. I think the group beauty is in the way that it energizes, actually gives you energy instead of draining you from it. It has really um, exemplified for me like how, how um, rewarding uh, also like socially and emotionally uh, group work can, can be. I think this group has been a very good opportunity to share also the, the kind of more negative experiences and what you might experience as kind of tough in teaching or difficult in teaching. In a group, maybe the most beautiful thing is that sometimes, just sometimes, you see that maybe somebody else is also getting the point of view that you are making, that you see the, the twinkle in their eyes that, okay, they are getting this. And this, I think, is the beauty of learning, that you, you share the same experience. It's basically changed my view on teaching entirely. So I would say that I'm, I'm almost becoming a radical teacher in this sense, that I just want to break the classical barriers. I feel that it kind of develops my sense of gratitude and sense of um, that when I get good things from other people, I need to pay it forward really positive and developing 
uh, interactions, like they, they develop this, my, my kind of debt to pay it forward uh, to my students and to my supervisees and to my colleagues. So that's, that's how important this, this has been. <laughs>